cattle livestock that live within the park frequently serve as food for the large carnivores. However, animals that die naturally also represent an important part of the carrion eater's diet. When a sheep dies, a whole procession of ghouls file past the corpse. First come the magpies and ravens, having to hurry before the arrival of the more powerful birds. Then come the griffin vultures, and the Egyptian vultures don't take long to appear, alerted by the presence of the corvidae, which they see from the sky at heights of hundreds of meters. During the feast, the animals wait their turn depending on their degree of hunger. The bigger the appetite, the fiercer the aggression, so that the most needy end up being the first to eat. It's for this reason that the vultures' carrion feast is a continuous riot of constant aggression, which is little more than bloodless warnings of the hunger suffered by each fellow diner. When vultures succeed in finding a corpse, they eat as much as they can, so that on occasions when they have finished, they weigh so much that they can't manage to take off and have to rest alongside the dead animal until they have digested. On these occasions, if they spot danger approaching, they regurgitate the undigested meat, and so eliminating the excess baggage, resume their weight and take off in flight to safety. Within the Picos de Europa mountains, those of Covadonga are the most symbolic, not only because it is the area of the first Spanish national park, but also because of their important role in Spain's history. According to legend, it was here that King Palayo conquered the Muslim invaders, initiating the Christian reconquest of the entire country. Chronicles relate how an old hermit who guarded an image of the Virgin Mary in a cave urged the king to invoke her protection in the battle. Pelayo conquered the Muslims and the place where the image stood became the center of worship for Christians and the Asturians in particular, who made the Virgin of Covadonga into their patron saint. In Covadonga today, a basilica commemorates the triumph of the Christian king, and just a short distance away, in a lime rock face, the legendary cave is preserved where the Santina is revered, the image of the virgin patron saint of Asturias. It is precisely from this cave, the Dominican cave or cave of Our Lady, that the name of Covadonga originates. Some chronicles recount that it was here that the old hermit showed Pelayo the image of the Virgin, while others maintain that it was the Asturian king who brought it here to help Pelayo in the battle.
The inside not only contains important images of worship, it also serves as the eternal resting place of the famous King Pelayo, the one who gave Covadonga an unforgettable role in the history of Spain. In historical times, the forests of the Picos de Europa were populated with a large number of bears. The very son of Pelayo, Fabila, died while hunting them in these mountainous lands. Today, however, the bear is the rarest and most powerful animal in the park. The bears do not live year-round within the protected area of the Picos de Europa, but rather pay sporadic visits to the area of Amieva and Valdeón, coming from the neighboring Riaño mountains. The Cantabrian bear population is scarcely 20 in number in its eastern nucleus and 50 in its western one. Although it seems that the populations have stabilized, the two nuclei have less than 70 or 90 bears, which some specialists consider the minimum viable population. In other words, that the population has a 95% possibility of sustaining itself for a hundred years without the direct intervention of man. For centuries, men have hunted and killed the bear, fearing for their herds or attracted by its trophy until pushing it to the edge of extinction. It's a similar story to that of the wolf, but the bear is less adaptable and finds it much more difficult to recover its numbers. Today, the reserves of the Cantabrian mountains are the last hope for the Iberian bear, since the Pyrenean population seems condemned to disappear definitively. The authorities compensate livestock and crop farmers for damage caused by the bears. The government and private institutions are joining forces to save them. And little by little, it seems that the bears are beginning to recover. Perhaps at some point in the future, they will become numerous again in the fertile beech forests of the Picos de Europa National Park. <laughs>